Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So I'm with a dear friend of mine, Mary Ann McGinn. Mary, how are you doing? Okay, thanks. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. So we are in the uh, historic city of Leicester in the Midlands of the United Kingdom. Uh, and Mary, Mary Ann, we've known for quite a while. Uh, she's originally from London, aren't you? That's right, yeah. Yeah, I'm how have you Oh, fantastic. That's the posh part of London, for those that don't know London. How long have you been living in Leicester for? Uh, 25 years now. Excellent. How's life in Leicester? It's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet. It's clean. Yes. A lot it's pretty. Yes. No, Leicester, Leicester's fantastic. So I arrived there early this morning and uh, Maria has a, a background in woodworking in general, don't you? Yeah. So how many years have you been working in woodworking? Um, I trained in carpentry and joinery 35 years ago. I've had a family in between, so things have broken up, but I've been, all my jobs since then have been in woodworking. And is that teaching and things like that? Yes, teaching. I've, I've done lots of um, rest renovations on houses and building cupboards and furniture. And uh, the last 10 years or so, I've been teaching in a day centre for people recovering from brain injury. Oh, wow. Inspiring work. So, uh, Marianne's work I've been following for a while, and as you can see, just a small sample behind us, her spoons are amazing. Uh, she's really starting to build a reputation amongst the green woodworking and spoon carving community. And having spent time at the recent Spoon Fest gathering uh, in uh, Derbyshire, uh, we got speaking, and Marianne has very kindly agreed to do this video you're about to watch here. Now, in this video, this is actually a two part series. In this first part, what you're going to be watching is Marianne's personal process that she goes through from start to finish, how to carve a spoon from scratch. In the second part of this series in the accompanying video, uh, what Marianne's going to very kindly show is some decorating techniques that she uses uh, from painting, coral rosin, etc. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the process from taking a raw billet of green wood uh, and then we're going to talk through Marianne as she actually progresses through. So obviously you can see by the length of this video, this is quite a long video and this is a very detailed video. But what we want to do in this video is encapsulate the entire process that she uses uh, to produce a beautiful work. What we're going to do in the beginning, and I think will be a good starting point before we continue, is just to show a very small selection of, of Marianne's work so you can start to get a feel. Her work is quite varied but very, very beautiful. So what we're going to do first is look at a, a bit of a sample of her work and then we'll get straight into this tutorial where Marianne McGinn is going to teach you how to carve a spoon. So Marianne, we're looking at just a small selection of your work here. Um, so obviously your work is quite varied, isn't it, in terms of the style that you do? Yes, I like to try different things. Um, I get a little bit bored if I do the same thing for too long. And also I like to experiment to see how I can expand my techniques. So starting from the top here, obviously this is a, a larger, larger serving spoon you've got here. So I'm noticing you're playing a lot around with paints, textures, etc. I'm still learning how to use the paints. Right. But I really like this green colour and it seems to be quite popular. That's beautiful. What particular wood is that from then? That's sycamore. Lovely. And so obviously you're playing around with different designs here, um, using the groove, and this we'll look in the second part of the video, the actual design techniques. But this is just to kind of have a look through to see some of the small selection of Marianne's very wide selection of work, and it's all beautiful, all lovely. So to start off, we're going to look at, obviously, um, the bit of wood to start working with. Um, are there particular woods that you prefer to work with, or is it kind of more so what you can basically get hold of? Um, a bit of both, really. I like sycamore because it's nice and clean, you can see what you're doing, and I also like cherry very much. But um, unless somebody's given me some wood, I have to work with what I've got. I go to the council depot, and mostly they have... Um, trees that they've pruned so I'm lucky to get cherry and sycamore but that's what I usually like to work with otherwise birch or a bit of magnolia oh well, uh, magnolia is something I've not carved yeah. with my neighbour didn't like my tree so he cut a big branch off as you do <laughs> as you <laughs> do to use that 
So with this one here, obviously you've shaped up a billet. For, some, for those watching then, so, um, I mean, you've got the stump here. So this would be what kind of section of uh, the stump that this has come from? This is a radial section. So illustrating it on this here, um, this, this, uh, um, this chopping block over here. So this would be, essentially, would that be like that? Yeah, that's the centre of the tree there. Okay. So you've kind of shaped this up into a billet. Yeah. A rectangle billet. That's right. So Perfect. that's the centre of the, that would be in the centre of the tree there, the heart. And that's the sapwood there. Perfect. You can see the little rings going there. And with your axe, what axe is it that you use particularly for yourself? This is a Hans Carlson axe I bought a few years ago. So I've been in the wars a little bit, but it's uh, beautifully comfortable. And I've never wanted to look at another axe because it does the job for me. Perfect. So the billet, once the billet is shaped up like you've got here, what's the first step that you're going to be doing? First thing I'm going to do is establish a profile. So I'm going to chop into the part where the bowl will be, um, the deepest part, and then I'll um, chop it back and up there, and then follow the shape on the outside. Excellent. Get a nice profile like that. Perfect. Hopefully. So just to get a side profile then. Okay, so on on I'll your... we take a little bit more off there. So that's the bowl that's, of the spoon, is that that's correct? That's the bowl yeah. there, and there's the handle going up. Excellent. So right now you're starting to think about the curvature and the, yeah. the kind of shape of the spoon overall. If you've got the um, profile right at the beginning, then all you need to do after that is to do the outline. And it should all fit together. There. That's the shape I wanted. Okay, so that's kind of what you feel happy with, yeah. heading into that. I'm doing the centre line. Oops. So now that you've got it axed out, what are you doing now? So you might I'm laying out. I, I often work without a template, but for this purpose, I'm just going to do it here. It's easier. Um, just do a centre line. Line up the template there. And draw around it. Oops, draw around it. Chop that out, chop that shape out. Perfect.
So you go right up to the line or are you leave a little bit of space? Um, I usually go quite close to the line. But it's something that you need to practice doing. Otherwise you get into trouble later on. So I'm just going to take this side down to width. So when you're about to do this drop cut, is it right that you should be paying attention to the grain, which way it's going? Absolutely. If you haven't got a straight grain piece of wood, then you need to approach it very carefully and perhaps start lower down, because otherwise it can veer off. In fact, it veered off there a bit, so I would just have to alter my design slightly. So you've gone really close to the line then basically with the axe and mm -hmm. try to get as close as you can. I've left depth there so I can play around with it. The weight off, I'm just going to mark where the centre line is. Give me a reference point. So later on. Right. So you're just going over the template once more? Yeah, just so I can see the lines. And then I'll cut around the line. And what's the knife that you typically use? Is it a Mora? Or? It's a Mora. Is it 106? Yes. Lovely. They're fantastic knives, straight knives. So at this stage you're focusing is it on the side profile? 
your folks are going to show you things up. I'm just cleaning it up and then I'm going to be working on the bowl shape. So going around the, the tighter aspects of the, the spoon, you're using more the tip of the knife, aren't you? Well, the tip of the knife's got more curve in it, so it can get into the little places like that. And you can take light cuts. It's not going to dig in too much. So the next step? I'm going to hollow out the bowl. There are lots of different ways of um, getting this shape right, but this is the one I'm working at at the moment. I'll hollow out the bowl a bit, and then I'll line up the bowl with the handle and try and get this profile cleaner. And what spoon knife are you using, just for reference? This is a Robin Wood compound curved knife. Oh, lovely. Which I've put my own handle on. I was about to say, it's not the, uh, the handle it comes with. Oh, you've done a great job. It's got a lot of leverage in a handle this size. So with the hollowing of the bowl, you're focusing on grain direction, aren't you? It's depending on how you're carving. Yes, you have to carve across the grain for it not to tear across here. Or if you are going to carve down, then you've got to carve towards the middle point from an outside towards the centre. So like that there. I know starting out, I struggled a lot with that. You used to get tear out and stuff, until yeah. I started to focus on brain direction. And also I think the more you do it, the more you get a feel for where your knife's got to go. Right, that's enough of that. I'm now going to look down the spoon here and see how it lines up with the handle because it's got to be a smooth plane. I'm 
and so I want to give it a bit of shape in the middle here which I know you can get it with the axe but this is another way of doing it my fingers out of the way when I do this. Curves to blend in a bit. Which curves is that? The curves of the well, the curve of this and the curve of this, okay. rather than having kind of steep um, changes of direction, it's easier to carve if you've got smooth curves, and also it looks a bit better. But I hit it a bit hard with the axe, so I'm just removing the lines. I think you need to be able to. Adjust things if thing if you spoon hasn't gone quite to plan. Right. And then. So you're happy with that up there? Yeah. Now. I often have it a bit steeper than that, but that'll do. So you're just double checking. Going well, I've up. changed the shape so this needs to be corrected to get the final outline. If people don't have a template like you're using here, what would you advise to, uh, to, to draw one up or to... Draw a line. Mm -hmm. Do a circle and blend the circle in you can either have it pointy or have it round, but always have this bit as a circle. Mm -hmm. So if you join that line there, you know, you get a circle here. Like that. So it's kind of based on a circle. Right. It's an egg shape. and try and get these edges straight.
I'll thin the neck down, but maybe at a slightly later stage. <coughs> Are you start from just inside that line? When you're going yeah. To... And then I'll work up to it. I'm using the flat bit of the knife as I get near the front and the round bit to get into the back. Now I'm going to work on the outside. Once again, I can do a little line here. You can do it by eye or you can use that to help you. So that's the line that you go up to, basically. Yeah.
I'm looking to have a, a smooth curve again, so I need to get this off. I notice you focus just on one section at a time, don't you? Yeah. Well, I'm kind of looking at it all over, but trying to get it down to the thickness I want. I, I normally axe my blanks um, a bit thinner, but... And that, once again, just comes with time, doesn't it? Yeah. The confidence with the axe to go closer and closer. Yes. The uh, potential for taking off too much with the axe is very great. Um, I'm going to start again. spoon-like. Right, I'm just going to take this down a little bit. Don't look right.
trying to even out this shape. kind of draw it again and make it more, more of a shape, won't it? You can adapt it basically if things go wrong.
So that technique is good for a lot of uh, stock reviewers, isn't it? Bracing yeah. the hand on the thigh. Yeah. So you're using your arm to do more of the work. to do those when it's dry because it's too stringy when it's wet. You're referring to like the finer cuts in the more Yeah. The finer shaping. Yeah. So Marianne, so with this kind of the uh, spoon obviously we're demoing, so essentially you would leave this to dry basically yeah. before uh, you would go ahead and finish it, is that correct? So I believe uh -huh. it was this one. Yeah, that's the one, one I've just done there. And there's one I've done before, which I'm going to decorate. And so with this one, essentially, how long would you typically leave it to dry before you go back to it? About uh, a day? Or? Yeah, about a day, but it depends how fresh the wood is. It could, could take a couple of days and how thick the uh, bits are. But that will probably just be a day. So you've got one that you've kind of obviously dried from before, something uh -huh. a little bit similar. So essentially with this one now, you're ready to just to do some uh, just finishing cuts, is that yeah. correct? This is London Plain, so it's got really nice figure on it. So well, that's lovely, that, isn't it? I won't be doing any fancy decoration on that. Okay. So London Plain, is it correct that I learned that obviously it's, it's what plant, it is planted on the streets of London uh, That's right. initially, but also a lot of the big cities. And it's true because what, it's, um, it's just long lasting, it's... It gives nice shade, big tree though, I think. They tend not to plant them so, so often now. I think that the Victorians planted a lot of them. But now I notice they plant a lot, the trees are a lot smaller that they plant because then they don't have to worry about the roots. 
is pretty. I mean, commercially, it's used for veneers, lace wood. Uh, interesting. Obviously, with it being dry, you're able to get much cleaner cuts, though, aren't you? Yes, it's very hairy when it's wet. The wood. Mm. Now you can do this sort of thing and get away with it. To see what it looks like as a silhouette, and that's a very good way of checking whether it's symmetrical or got any funny lumps and bumps. So as you approach the finishing stage, do you have like a clear vision in your head of what it's going to look like? Well, hopefully when I've finished carving it, when it's wet, it's more or less the shape I want. So when I'm doing the finishing cuts, I'm smoothing out some of the cuts, just so you get a kind of uniform curve. And uh, make sure that the edges are uniform thickness and the bowl's just right. So you can go around, just check things are all the same. Like that. If you look along the edge, you can see if there are any differences in thickness. Then I'll smooth the bowl out. So what spoon knife is this one? This is one I bought recently off Jared Dahl. It's a Reed Schwartz, American one. Oh, interesting. Have you redone the handle or...? I just painted it. I painted it, I was about to say. It's my effort. <laughs> painting. It went through various stages. This is a nice knife because it's sturdy, but it's it's got a curved back there uh, compared to the Robin Wood ones, which are flat. It's got a lovely curve, so it slides it slides along the bowl. Taking tiny bits off now. You need good light to be able to see this. Especially the older you get, huh? <laughs> I'm <laughs> talking about myself and also. Yeah, winter time is bad for light. Have you heard about the concept of uh, nighttime carving? 
So they say that you, um, you end up kind of focusing a lot more on the piece you're doing. Um, oh, because there are no interruptions. There's no interruptions, but also just light. There's such low light conditions that you're forced to focus a lot more on your piece. Um, as long as you can see it. As long as you can see it. Yeah. Sounds good. I could do that. As long as there's plenty of tea on the go. <laughs> so look, I've got a nice round bowl and you can feel with your fingers whether there are any discrepancies there. Some people like to leave their bowls um, with the knife marks but I like it smooth. And then any knife marks, they can stay on the back. Usually one side of the bowl is easier to do than the other. And why is that? Because you're carving towards yourself there and then you're doing it upside down on the other side. You've got to reverse the direction of the cut. Doesn't always come naturally to me. So suffice to say, at this stage of the process, you can just take as long as you want, really, can't you? You can put the finish yeah. in. Well, it's a good idea not to take too long. Because you end up just fiddling around and making changes that were probably best to leave it alone. It's difficult to know when to stop. I'm going for I'm going for a, a curve that's like that. So it's nice and smooth. So there you go, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Marion, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so in this video, there's a couple of things you'll notice. Um, I didn't like to disturb Marion while she was carving. The idea of this video is to get insight into her particular process, the way she approaches her carving technique from start to finish. And hopefully that's been relayed on this video. Um, and secondly, like we mentioned just earlier on, the spoon was carved up into a point. Then obviously you dry for about a day, two days, uh, and then obviously we kind of done the whole prepared this version earlier, and then we've done the finishing cuts. And the finishing cuts really you kind of take as much time as you need, don't yeah, you? That's right. Until you're kind of happy uh, mm -hmm. uh, with everything done. Um, and so with this one, the goal was to obviously relay those techniques across, like how you know tools that Marion uses, the way that she uses them, 
And even myself, I've seen a lot of spin cards at work, and I've done a lot, watching Bowie and at work. It's very, very insightful. So, a couple of things to mention. Number one, obviously there is a part two accompanying this video series where we're gonna have a brief look at some decoration techniques for spoon carving, as well as green wood in general. If that video is already out by the time you're watching this video, you can check the link below, just below this video, and that will take you to part two. If the video is not out yet by the time you're watching this video, then stay tuned and that will be appearing very soon. The other thing I want to mention is Marianne uh, does this professionally full time. And so I owe, owe her a great deal of gratitude to allow me to come into her abode uh, and document her process for you to see. So all I'm gonna ask is the following. If you got any value from this whatsoever, and I really hope you did, then I will just ask kindly that you do two things. Number one, you check out her Instagram, if you're on Instagram yourself, and for that I will put a link below in the description. Number two, I will put a link to her website. And on her website, she has a newsletter. She emails out, uh, occasionally giving you updates on courses that she's running. Uh, you can also see, obviously, the spoons that she has available for you to buy should you want to have a look. I own uh, a couple of the spoons myself. Uh, they're beautiful, beautiful spoons in my collection. And so on the website, you can see all the kind of details about what she gets up to day to day. And I would encourage you, when you go to the website, to join the newsletter. Just enter your name and email, uh, there's no spam or nothing, and basically Marianne will just update you on everything that she has going on. She does teach, she does have uh, uh, her spoons available to buy. So like I said, just two things I ask kindly that you do. Number one, check out her Instagram, link below. And number two, check out her website, also link below. And it would mean the world to me to do those two things. And it's just our way of saying thank you for Marianne uh, to allow me to document her process. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. Marianne, thank you so much once again. And I will see you in part two to this video. And as always, for Marianne and myself, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. Peace out.